The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. By now it was already late, and his disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already very late. Dismiss them so that they can go to the surrounding farms and villages and buy themselves something to eat. He said to them in reply, Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Are we to buy 200 days' wages worth of food and give it to them to eat? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five loaves and two fish. So he gave orders to have them sit down in groups on the green grass. The people took their places in rows by hundreds and by fifties. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up 12 wicker baskets full of fragments and what was left of the fish. And those who ate of the loaves were 5,000 men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel reading is just one of the practically seven accounts in the whole of sacred scriptures regarding the feeding of the 5,000, which actually is understood from the perspective of a miracle. Now, what is seven man? Because there is one in the Old Testament which happened during the time of the prophet Elisha. And then there are six in the New Testament coming from the four Gospels. Now, the very basic understanding of our Gospel reading today is none other than the Eucharist. In fact, almost all reflections today actually focus on the dimension of the Eucharist. But we should not forget that the Eucharist is not just only about the breaking and the sharing of bread. In the Gospel of St. Mark, which is today's Gospel reading, a very, very tiny dimension is given at the start of the gospel reading. And what is that? He taught them many things. And this, is, this should not be uh, uh, neglected in our understanding of the scriptures, the Eucharist, because the Eucharist is always a two-fold, a two-part celebration. Right? The first section is the liturgy of the word, where we break the word where we reflect on the teachings, where we try to embrace even sometimes hurting teachings that we, it's difficult for us to accept. And the second portion is, of course, the liturgy of the Eucharist, the breaking of the bread. And so this particular imagery of the episode in the Gospel of St. Mark is really the very Eucharist itself. Dili lang ang pag-breaking of bread, kundili apilpod ang teaching. Because the word dimension of the Eucharist always is very significant. Because the word is also the same food that we receive. That's why to complete our attendance and celebration of the Eucharist, we have to, as much as possible, be present in both parts. Because the word that is speaking to us is at the same time the very food that we are uh, receiving. Now, one significant dimension as well of today's gospel reading, just like the gospel of St. John. There is this reference to the order that Jesus gave to the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. Now, in other words, the time is actually springtime. Kay birdi pa man, lunhaw pa man ang mga sagbot. But beyond the image of the green grass as 
reflective or determining the time during the, the, when Jesus fed the, the multitude, the 5,000. This is a very beautiful image of the Good Shepherd. Alang-alang, asaman, pa, asaman ipahiluna sa maayong magbalantay ng karnero, ang iyahang mga karnero, sa birde, sa lunhaw, nga sibsibanan. Now, so there are actually so many levels of understanding that enriches our, our perception and our listening to the very message of today's Gospel reading. And most of all, finally, this very dimension the Eucharistic dimension happens every time we celebrate the Eucharist, of course, and every time we break ourselves in order to share to others, even outside the confines of the church or the chapel or of the Mass. Because every day of our lives, we are called to be Eucharistic persons, thanking the Lord for the graces that He has given us, and at the same time, breaking ourselves for all our brothers and sisters who are most in need. Amen.